Hi, my name's Caleb, also known as GoFreak, and we're gonna run through the new features on Ableton 11 with Happy Mag and Umami. Today, I'll be remixing a record which is a little bit different, it's a bit more surfy rock from a band called Pacific Avenue. The track's called Easy Love. Yeah, I've never remixed surfy rock before. Most of the stuff I get a chance to remix is probably already dance music. Now, we should go hit the studio. Okay, so the first new feature I wanted to look at was the new MIDI polyphonic expression. I got the chords from the original track, which sound like this. And then I put it into MIDI, and then I put in my own synth in there. And the cool thing was, was being able to pitch up just one note in the chord. So, so you click on this, clip here, which is all new, like these new three layouts. I'm going to redo the pitch gliding, which I did on the singular notes in the chords, so just to show the different feels it has. So this is without it. OK, so I'm just going to start with the top notes, but the cool thing was being able to pitch it up directly to the next chord note, which it's running along. So I've done that here. You start to hear the different glides happening as I'm doing it. Some notes I went back down. It makes a general chord progression sound so much more unique by doing this. You can even curve the notes as well, which is something I've always wanted to do. You probably hear a lot of my music now. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm sold on that. The rest of the, the notes will hold that nice lush sound, but you just get those top higher frequencies that are gliding up and down, which is just creates a really cool effect. The next feature I'd like to look at is the delay. Spectral time, love using delays, everyone does. Yeah, brought, brought my percussion to life. It's got so much movement. I originally kind of dropped in a preset and I was like blown away with how it shifted and changed the pitch. I haven't used anything like it before. So here is just a time. It's got a bit of reverb on it already, but I might just take that down. And then I'll add in a spectral time. I'm just sort of having a play here and seeing where it takes me. This kind of sounds like a ping pong ball has been just bouncing around a room with a lot of reverb. But just by playing with these little, with the time, feedback, the shifting, it's super cool for like making build ups which is definitely all new to me or like having all these options of spreading times out and like what you can do with it was just kind of super fun and I love it. Um, so here is the vocal cuts that I've used from the original. I've, I use quite a lot of it. I think it's like the pre-chorus or the verses that I've used. Um, I'll just solo them. It's hard getting things right, but it's easy loving you. And this is it, just dry. The original stem had a bit of reverb in the audio. I wanted to add a nice, big, long, fat delay. So I used the spectral time, which is in the delays. And I just sort of started fiddling with it, so I'll just make a little loop. For the music that I make, it's it's everything. So this is like the build out that I was kind of want, that I wanted to achieve. Now it's easy love. It's easy love. 
It starts getting nice and wild, which is exactly what I wanted for this section because uh, I cut the vocal to have a little bit more breathing room. That's like exactly what I was sort of hoping for with the arrangement. It's perfect. It's perfect. And I'm sure there's so much more that I'll be able to play with and go into a bit. And that's just building up for me perfectly. I used the spectral resonator in another part of my track. I had a nice little clap that I was working with and I liked the, the tone to it, but it just didn't have much of a tail. It was short, especially for my mix that I had going. I, I kind of wanted to space it out a little bit more and add a little bit more. I looked at the reverb and resonance and I opened up the drum challenger because I was like, makes sense, it's a drum. And yeah, when I turned it on, it gave it like a bit of a robotic effect. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like a tiny, tight delay, but it, with a bit of tail. The, it gives you the exact notes. So, you know, as I'm writing in A sharp as a root key, I can kind of keep it in that pitch. So like for pitching drums, that's, that's cool. Very electronic, but that's that's my that's my jam. So much to play with here as well. So the next really cool feature is the new MIDI scale feature that's in the MIDI clips. Now I don't have a musical background. I kind of had to learn musical theory myself, but it's just so much quicker than kind of knowing what notes you're gonna have to write in the piano roll. So basically when I figured out what key I was gonna write in with this track, I was able to start mucking around with my bass line. But to get there, I kind of dropped into the, the A sharp minor scale, which is what I'm writing in. And what happens is it highlights everything green. So then that way, when you're, you're writing along, you can be like, okay, perfect. This is where I'm hitting. I'm hitting all these green notes and you can start just mucking around and shifting between those notes. And then, you know, once all your notes are in, you can kind of um, hit this new scale button up here. And you basically don't even have your out of key notes anymore. And obviously it's a bit of a weird sound, so you probably don't get that the tones right to hear, but yeah, super handy writing on the fly. It's speeding up the process of writing. The next feature I'll have a look at is the chorus ensemble. I took a tiny little cut, sort of end of a word type thing. Yeah, I did a little bit of automating, so it just sounds like a little bit more of a stab. But I wanted to use it as a bit of a synth, so adding a, a bit of a chorus ensemble in there, and there's some really cool presets made, but it's super easy to use. And it just instantly started making it sound like a like a synth rather than a, a cut word. Now I'm just going to play around with it a little bit, play with the rate. Again, like I could use this sort of synth for a build up or in the drop. It's sending it a lot wider in the spectrum range. You know, if I'm using it in a transition period or like the end of a drop where I want to kind of make it start to sound a bit, you know, something's coming up or something's building, you have a lot more control of, of what's happening. I think the chorus ensemble is going to be something that I'll be using a lot more on nearly everything. Things that are just, you know, that need that space or want that top and sort of flow and flavour and pitch shifting. So. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. 